So we've all heard the saying, keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. Well, that plays into the second law of power in the 48 laws of power, which is never put too much trust in your friends and learn how to use your enemies. The key takeaway from this law is that your friends have the ability to screw you over and sometimes even more so than people you don't even know, which leads to the second part of the law, which they say it's use your enemies, but I don't agree with the enemy part. We'll get to that part later. But use people you don't know, for example, if they're working for you to get a job done. And I mean, let's let's face it. I don't know about you, but me in my life, I've gotten screwed over more by people that I've known and trusted than I have by people that I don't know. Partially because with people you don't know, your guard's sort of up. And that's the red blinders, like the, the rose-colored glasses that they have, with, or that people have with their friends, myself included. You've known them for a long time. You wouldn't think that they'd screw you over because, you know, they've had like a long track record of doing it, of not doing it. But then it comes out of the blue, especially when it comes to friends working for you. I mean, it's not always that bad, quite frankly can't really make blanket statements on anything because this world is infinite shades of gray instead of just black and white. However, I have seen countless time and time again where I've either hired someone or I've seen someone else that has hired someone and is, is someone that they knew and it went wrong. If, if you're familiar with Biggie Small's Ten Crack Commandments, keep family, uh, keep family and business completely separated. There's a reason for that. Robert Greene goes on to say that your friends will grow envious and they will undermine you saying stuff like that, which is true. If you have something, your friends might want to hitch along for the ride, but when, and you'll help them, but when you need that same help, they're not there for you. There's an example of that in the book where some dude who was rich, some young kid, ended up taking some other kid off the street and helping him along. That kid got more influence and... I guess that the first kid, kid number one, which I'm going to put right here, was a prince. Ended up becoming king, whatever it was. Kid number two was feeding off of kid number one, and then they grew up. Kid number two got way more influence, and then kid number one fell on hard times, partially because he was helping out kid number two. And now they're men. But when number one went to number two and said, yo, can you pay back some of the stuff that I loaned you? Number two was like, no, nah, I don't think so and then just ended up unaliving number one in his sleep with a couple people and then became the new king. It's, it's some crazy things. It's a drastic example. However, it makes the case where we, we let our guard down around the people that we trust and you shouldn't be paranoid, don't get me wrong, like that. You don't, there's no way to live that way. But the key takeaway from this is your friends don't have a 0% chance of screwing you over. It might be slim but it's not zero and it's something to take away which goes back to even the previous episode where I said there are things that you could take away from these 48 laws of power that don't require or make it necessary for you to gain power with it you just understand the law and you take from that but when it comes to people working for you that you know keeping family and business separated I've seen it firsthand. They're your friend. You're trying to help them out, get them a job, or make it easier for you. But because they're your friend, that it's a double-edged sword. Yeah, it makes it easier for you, but might demand more money because they know they can. Uh, they're going to do less work because they know they can because now it puts you in a bad position because the friendship's on the line. And now, like, if you fire them, it might end the friendship. So you, you, it's, it's just a bad position to be in overall because now you have to pick between your business and your friendship or hope that your friendship gets saved and your business because your friend wants to just move along, go do something else. Not for nothing, it's the situation I find myself in right now with one of my businesses dealing with it. But... But when it comes to the enemy, I don't really agree with the enemy part, you know, that your enemies, yeah, you keep an eye on them, but you don't really have to 
use them. I prefer to just leave them where they're at and not interact with them at all because that's that's a little bit of playing with fire unless you're trying to make them your friend. And that's what the book is saying is if you want a job done, pretty much your enemy has more to prove to you that they're not going to screw you over. And I've replaced enemy with random person. And granted, that isn't always the case, but you got to get a good character of someone. However, someone that you don't know, if you're hiring them for a job, whatever it is, or you need something done, they have more to prove to you. So they're going to do a lot better of a job, especially if they haven't been there long or they're trying to gain some kind of experience, they're going to do a better job to have themselves look good on paper. So long story short, key takeaway from this is, once again, your friends have the ability to screw you over. A lot of people wear masks, and that's part of the game of power. They will wear a mask to get the things that they want, and you don't know if someone is ready to dump you, so to say, or get rid of you, because, like, I mean, they're not going to say it, you might hear inklings of it somewhere or wherever, but then you just might not believe it. Just be careful. That's really all I have to say. Don't be paranoid. Don't live in isolation because, like I said before, that's no way to live. But understand the fact that your friends are not infallible. They can and will screw you over depending on the price. Everyone has a price. And that's it. But that's enough for today. My name is Brendan. This is The Lost Tribe. This channel exists to gain knowledge and help people gain knowledge. Follow me along my journey of gaining knowledge and making myself better. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, do what you got to do. If you like this content, follow it. Follow me. I'm going to be posting more like this. I'm going to try to do it every day. 48 Laws of Power. Because... If I do like three postings a week of this, it's going to take months, and I feel like that's a little too long for me. I also don't want to blow up the algorithm and post 48 days straight, so I'm going to try to post like four or five a week. We'll see how that goes. But anyways, once again, Brendan, Lost Tribe, peace out.